Is it all? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Come on in. Welcome. My name is Pastor Scott, or Scott, or whatever you want to call me. I'm glad you're here today. What you saw there was our man, Travis, dropping the pumpkins as we kicked off the pumpkin decoration. We, we destroyed eight pumpkins and, brought a bu uh, and then we uh, violated a bunch of our insurance policies, but we did it anyway. And Travis was willing to go on the lift and uh, not use a harness, but I, we're, we'll work on that. Okay. Anyway, we did a great job. I'm glad you're here today. One of the things I want to just go over a few of the announcements that happened in Life the Church. We had a pumpkin decoration contest, and I think it's important. Do we have those, Catherine, that we can see those? We're going to show you. There are our champions right there. So we've got the best card pumpkin was Logan Inks. Let's get it for Logan. He did a good job. You got Tug. The best painted pumpkin was Kara Fowler, and I, that's, I, I don't know how that got in there, but I'm glad she won. <laughs> Looks like a drink. And then we had the best overall pumpkin was the Isenberg. Where are they? They're here. Let's, uh, there they are. Stand, go ahead and stand up. Go, stand up. Let us let them look at the family here. They carved and they painted and they cut and uh, they won fair and square. So that's a good job, you guys. They're our champion. And so that means that she gets the judge part of the chili contest when we have it in January. Wow, you guys are like, okay, great. <laughs> anyway, I want to remind you that we do have a lot of pumpkins out front in front of the church. But I want to say something about that. So we do sell pumpkins and it goes, the, the money is used for the youth. But that's not the purpose of the pumpkins. The purpose of the pumpkins is to engage in the community. So I want to make sure. So we, we do, the youth get some funds and that's great. I, and, I'm, and I'm all, that's, that's great. But I could care less about the money. What I care about is us engaging the community and inviting people in the church. And it's a great way if they don't have a church or just to say, hey, we're glad you came out to shop. We're glad you're here on our campus. It's a great thing to do. If you have not signed up for that, I am encourage you to sign up for it. We got a lot of spots, and it's a fun way just to talk to people, get no fellow people. By the way, we have had over 101 people unload the pumpkins last Sunday. 101. And that, a lot of those were, there were a few, the kids at HHS that helped for the uh, Honor Society, but a lot of you showed up and wore your, your rumps off. And it was, there was 44,000 pounds of pumpkins. 44,000 pounds. It took us three hours, but next year we can do it two and a half, so I'm counting on you. With that being said, uh, if you've come today and you just need a, you need a little respite or you need, um, just need to talk to God or you just need a place which you can just sing and praise God, this is the place. And I just want to open us up in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this space. Thank you for this family of Christ. Help us worship and celebrate you this day. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand, let's worship together. Anybody coming here today running on a half a tank or the tank's running a little low, we're going to pray and ask God to fill our cup, fill it all the way up to overflow. Amen. Amen.
You can clap your hands at church, it's okay. I've been walking to a city that I cannot see. Through the depths of the valley where the sun can't reach. I've been high, I've been low, I've been looking for a river that could fill my soul. Been walking to a city that I cannot see. Fill my cup up. Say what they want, I don't want what they say. I was born far from home. I've been thriving in the wonder of the great unknown. Cause I'm drinking from a well from another. I know that even this valley was a golden stream Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I 
Okay, we can get the Lord's Prayer. We should all know this, right? Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Let's declare. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but to live.
in my heart. Hey, give yourselves a round of applause. Good job. You may be seated. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day together to worship you, to come together in this church. We just thank you for being here with us today, God. And here in just a moment, we're going to take our offering and we are just thankful and grateful and willing to do this for you, Jesus, and for this church. In your name we pray. If the ushers will please come. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't
as we're getting started, make sure you have with you some seeds and a little bitty, little bitty planter. Has everybody got that? I want to make sure you got that. Shake them around so I make sure you have some. They're on the chairs. That's it. Shake them. Shake them like a little shaker. There we go. Good, good, good. I, some of you aren't shaking. I can see this dark. My eyes are good. 2020 with contacts in. As we get started today, I want to begin with this question before we get started. How many of you here, and uh, you know what I'm saying, grew up on a farm, near a farm, or worked at a farm sometime in your life? If you did, raise your hand. Let's say, oh, we got a good crowd. Well, looky there. We got, a, we got some people there. So this sermon and the dirt, how many of you have ever been to a farm with ground and dirt and all that, of crops? Anybody? Oh, good. So we got most people have been part of this. So that's good. So this sermon today is, has a lot talking about the soil. And um, as we begin the day, I want you to hear the scripture with this in mind as you think about what it means to have good soil, um, what it means to be planted, what it means to have be the seeds in your life, and as we get into talk about this day. And so I'm going to start with our scripture reading. It's on the screen, I believe. That day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds had gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil was deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants, and they dried it because they had no roots. Other seeds fell among the thorny plants. The thorny plants grew, and then it choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. In another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. Let me say that again. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, as we come to this place to hear your word, I pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will just come before me. I pray, dear Lord, that I'll get out of the way and just allow you to do your transformal work in this place. Guide us and watch over us. In Christ's name, amen. We've been doing our sermon series on choosing. And the first sermon we did was choosing to grow up. Uh, last week was choosing to be humble. And this week is choosing to listen or to hear. And I want to begin by telling you a story a little bit about myself. My mother had eight brothers and sisters. And when she grew up, they would take care of her older siblings. And in particular, one of her sisters named Blanche, Blanche Mayo, was the one who really looked after her and really cared for her a lot. As a result, because I was my mother's son, she cared for me a little bit special as well. And they had a farm in Cedar Hill near Adams Deer in Robertson County. And every day, every, every weekend or every other weekend, we'd go up there and they had cows and pigs. And I learned to milk a cow and I learned to see about the little squilly pigs that would run around. They had chickens and we'd, do all, we'd play in the barn. It was just a great adventure place with creeks and fishing and gigging frogs and all that wonderful stuff you can imagine as a kid that I got to be privy to as a young man. But when I hit about age 11 or 12 or so, it became something different. See, they raised tobacco. Has anybody here ever cut tobacco before? If you cut tobacco, yeah, just one hand. You're going to have to get a sit on the front row. That's a woman right there. When you cut, no one else cut tobacco but one person in this home? Oh, my gosh, boy, we're talking about the privilege. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cutting tobacco is hard work. There's burly and there's dark. And you split the dark and put it on uh, poles, or we call it uh, uh, the other little poles. We call them, yes. And then the burly you would cut. But it's been done the same way for hundreds of years. In fact, in Robertson County, you always hear about people right now, they're smoking the dark tobacco. People think the barns are on fire, right? It has a nice smell, but it's all throughout. So this is what happens in Robertson County. So every summer, in the middle of August, you would learn, you would have to cut. My, there wasn't a lot of help, and so my aunt would get us the help. And part of that helping process was is that you worked hard, and then in the morning, you would go up in the barn. I'd climb up to the barn. You'd have a stick handed to you, and you'd kind of spread it out so the tobacco could dry out. And this was hard work. So that what took place during my high school years and as a kid. But when I went to college, I didn't have to do it anymore. But after I finished college, my aunt needed help. They didn't have enough help, and they asked if I'd come back. Now, I wasn't in farmer shape at that time. And let me tell you what happened. So we're cutting along the patch of Burley. It's hot outside in August. My aunt told me to drink more water, and my aunt told me to slow down. 
but there were other men and women working. My aunt could outwork all of us. And I wasn't going to slow down. I wasn't going to let anybody think that I was a wimp, this college boy. A few minutes later, I found myself passed out right in the middle of that burley patch in that cold, rich dirt. Today's sermon is about the good soil and what it means for you and I to be the good soil. Now, this has been called the parable of the sower. It's called the parable of the seed. It's been called the parable of the harvest. In fact, it's talked about in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. When, whenever you see something listed in three Gospels, it's three different perspectives. So you have three different people telling their side of how they saw the story. In fact, Matthew even has to explain it. Jesus has to explain it in Matthew because the disciples don't quite get it. And so we see Jesus. He's sitting on the boat. He's teaching people. And just to let you know, back then it wasn't like this. People just didn't, he didn't stand there and everybody was quiet. There was a crowd, it was a crowd gathered around him. They were loud, they were rowdy. There were, they were, there were some that really wanted to just have a miracle happen in their life. So they gathered around just to experience this miracle. Others were there because they didn't like Jesus and they wanted to catch him on something that he was doing so they could catch him in the middle of something and get on him, which they tried, as you know, eventually did. And so you got this large crowd gathered together and he calls and he tells this story. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came, and they ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. That sprouted up immediately because the soil wasn't too deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among the thorny plants, and the thorny plants grew and choked the seeds. And then we're told this, other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. He talks about how the yields were, and he says, everyone who has ears should pay attention. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. I believe that Jesus is saying to us, at least what he explains, is the question of, are you the good soil? Are you the, and how do you become good soil? And what about these ski, seeds being scattered? What, if, what in my life is being choked up or eaten by birds? I think that if we all said, it, don't, I, I want to be good soil. Do you want to be good soil? No, maybe, unsure. The answer is yes, Scott, because Jesus tells me, okay. Here's what, I, here's what I do to think to be good soil. We've got to first be cultivated. Now, any of you have ever, has anybody ever planted a garden? I know that you work for it. People planted a garden here, yes, okay. You know there's clumps that happen. If you don't have clumps in your dirt, seed can't grow, so you gotta break it up, right? So we need cultivation. So I want you to help say to your neighbor, I need cultivation. I want you to say it to them, okay? Now you say on the count of three, one, two, three. That's the best you can do. Some of you need more cultivation now. Let's say it again on the count of three, one, two, three. I need cultivation. We have to be able to put our hands and break up the clumps that are in our lives. What clump is preventing you from being good soil? What are the clumps, the places in the soil in your life that are locked up so that God's hands can't break you apart so that you can be good soil? Do you have clumps in your life? If so, are you willing to admit to what they are? I need cultivation. Say it one more time. I need cultivation. Say it. What has prevented you from being cultivated for God? What is getting in the way? I think that one of the things that we can do to start the cultivation process, to get rid of the clumps in our lives, is to simply talk to God. Now, people always think that when you talk to God, you've got to do this, right? And there's got to be some meditation music playing, playing behind you, and you're on your knees. Maybe a conversation with God is simply, Lord, I am being blocked up and I can't move forward. How many of you pray to God when things are really bad? <laughs> yeah. And how many times do you pray when things are good? You say, thank you, God. Oh, oh, oh. But you're it's model students on that front row. Conversations with God help us in the cultivation process. But in addition to being cultivated, you know what I realized too? That things won't grow in our lives unless there's nutrients. And so I brought some nutrients. And what is it that you are putting in your life to make you more a nutrient fed for God? So I want you to say this. Say to your neighbor, I need nutrients. Say it. 
You not look at the person and say it for God's sake. Well, I need nutrients. Because you know what? Things won't grow on good soil unless you put stuff into it. Now, sometimes I put on this bag of soil, I put miracle grow, right? Because the only thing that really makes us grow well is God's miracles in our lives. But what about you? What nutrients are you pouring into your lives? I think too often the nutrients that we put into our lives maybe are the things, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of noise going on right now, is there not? Am I the only one hearing a lot of noise? If we put that into the soil that God has for us, regardless, it has nothing, regardless of wherever you find yourself in the middle of this season, maybe you and I as Christians ought to turn stuff off and think about what we need to put into our lives to make us more nutrient rich for God. If things aren't growing in your life, why aren't they? Have you ever really asked yourself the question, why aren't things, what nutrients am I putting in my life? If I'm only putting in discouragement and what's on CNN or Fox, then I'm not going to be able to grow right for God. I'm just telling you that. That's not a political statement. That's a God statement. If I'm on my phone all the time, but not on my knees to God at least half the time, then I'm not going to be nutrient rich to have things grow what is plucking the seeds out of your life? What is the thorns growing up around your life, not allowing you to grow? Because we all want to be, God says we should be what? We should be good soil. Good soil. I want to be good soil, don't you? I want to be the places where things in my life multiply 10 times, 20 times. I want to be the kind of person that when people come, they're glad to see me. They don't run away from me. If you were to be honest, are people happy to see you or do they run away from you? I'm not, that's, please don't raise your hands. <laughs> but it's a real question, isn't it? Am I lifting people up? Am I tearing people down? Am I finding the best in people? Am I finding the worst in people? Am I have something to say, yeah, but, oh, they're a great person, but. I'm that person too. I, I, look, we, you know, I've always been transparent. I, I say that sometimes. It's always like, it's been a, we've had a good week in our house, okay? We've had a good week in our household. And then I went, maybe this is the end, Beth. <laughs> and she said, come on, Scott. You think it's the end of the world? I said, no, it's going too good. You know, you're, those are crazy thoughts, aren't they? But we, we like, when's the hammer going to drop? But the question is that Jesus, so we need nutrients to help us. We need to break up this crap that's in our lives. There's a clump right there that, that God, and only by the hand of God can it break it up. And then we've got to have stuff poured into our lives. So what is the things, well, let me tell you what helps us. Let me tell you the main thing that I think helps pour into this growth process. Worship God. Talk to God. Pray to God. Learn about God. Those are the nutrients. Sing to God. Those are the nutrients that we need in our lives to help, help us grow and become the fertile soil. Now you've got your seeds and you've got your buckets. See, here's how I see this. These are the things that God, God brings us all kind of things in our life. Now, this happens to be a little flower. And I put flowers so to make you look sunny. And this is like us. This is the vessel, right, that, that, that's our body. It's, it's us. It's our, as people. What are you putting in here in your life? What is it you don't need to put in your life anymore? What is it you need to stop putting in your life? Are there people, that, I'll just say it. Are there some people in your life that don't need to be part of your life? That's a hard, right? Sometimes, I mean, you have to make decisions about destructive people that are in your lives. And you say, I, I'm not angry with them. I just, I can't have them in my life. I've got to take a time out. I've got to let God do a work in them. Or, or what else? What are you, look, I don't, just let me say this. I don't have a problem I don't have a problem with people having alcohol or, you know, those sort of things. But if you've got a drinking problem and you're pouring that into your soil all the time, you're not going to be fertile ground for anybody, okay? Or let's talk about food. I, I'm, all, I'm all the people that should be talking about food. I know. Here's the example. I said it earlier. So I like Hershey candy bars, right? They're good, aren't they? And right now it's Halloween. They're everywhere. But they break my mouth out. I don't know what it is. It started happening when I became... <clears throat> In my 50s, my later 50s, you can't eat stuff anymore. And, but I will eat those candy bars, knowing that my mouth's going to break out, and then get mad about it, because my mouth broke out. 
But I'm the one eating the candy bar. So we get mad about our soil, be able to put crap in our soil and our bodies that doesn't be right to help anything grow. What we also need in our lives to help us grow is rest. If any of you ever grew crops or know about it, there's a season where the fields, you let lay fallow. Now they turn over now. Now what you do is you do soybean and corn. And it turns it over and they do have a new process. But in the old days, you, would leave the, you wouldn't plant on that field. You wouldn't place tobacco. You would place a garden in the same place you planted last year. You plant somewhere else. It's a little different now, but that's the way it used to work. Sometimes a field has to lay fallow. It has to rest. Where are you resting so that God can help produce and make in you soil that's rich? We're too busy going and going and going. When's the last time you spent 30 minutes alone with God? No phone, no TV, no children. <laughs> we don't, you know, no, just you with God alone. Now, I said this earlier. I have done that. I have spent time. I have found a place. And I've sat there. And I said, I'm going to spend time with God. And I've fallen asleep. Has anybody ever done that? It's the truth, right? I mean, I'm going to be in this. Okay, so it happens, right? I fall asleep. We have beautiful parks in Hendersonville. Galton, Sumner County. They're fantastic. You, there are so many great places to go experience God right where we live. If, you don't, if, you, if you're not from here, if you're visiting, let me just tell you something. This is a great place, right? Is it a perfect place? Oh, heck no. Is it a great place? Absolutely. It's a great place. How are you saying resting so that God might pour into you? How are you resting that God might pour into you? So that you could be the fertile soil. I mean, you need nutrients, you need rest. So turn to your neighbor and say, I need some rest. Go ahead. Say it. I need some rest. Do you need rest? Roger, you need rest, buddy. <laughs> On the top of this, I put miracle grow. Yes, it's a cheesy reference, but Jesus is the one that helps us grow, right? That's the miracle that changes all of it. Here's the thing. You don't have to be perfect for God to do a mighty growth in your life for somebody else. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? Guess what? You don't know how, have to know all the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Rules. Throwing that out for my Baptist friends. We know scripture. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it. God still uses you. The question is, are you allowing yourself to be fertile soil so things can grow? Are you, is anything growing out of your life for something better than yourself? Are you allowing yourself to be the good soil? That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, Paul, they're saying, are you good soil? Only you can answer that question, right? Here's the thing. Did you guys know, I, I, I can't think of you, but the person whose land that this church is built on that gave the land. Burns? Burns. 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 Mr. Burns. Her granddaughter was here today, and she told me while I was telling the sermon that she was thinking about this land Mr. Burst, when it was on the old property, they had land here. And he said, go pick out what you want and mark it off for the church. And you can build a church on this land. Th think about that. The land that we are on, this space was farmland. Rich soil. And look which was planted and has grown. Look at the lives that have been changed. By hearing the story of Jesus Christ. Think about it. Somebody said, go pick out the land that you want, mark it off, and build your church. You could, I think you have it, right? Just get, but have it. Have it. He owns land. He says, go take the land, build a church. If God can do that on land, what do you think God can do in your soul? If God can do that with a building, what do you think God can do with your soul? 
Too many of us have decided that God is not going to use us to grow anything. And I'm telling you, God is going to use you to grow many things if you'll just let them. But you've got to cultivate, you've got to put nutrients in. And even if you don't, if you lay fallow, God will still make something grow. The question is, what thorns, which birds are you going to say, stay out of my life because I want to be good soil? Don't you want to be good soil? I do. I spent a lot of time not being good soil. Okay, that's the truth. Not until I was 30 years old that I decided that maybe God was doing something more than me. And God brought people in my life to help me. See, that's the other thing. You don't do it alone. Oh, I was a, I was a pretty decent man. But I wasn't good soil. I was putting things, boy, I was putting things into, my, into my, myself that wasn't great. Chasing things that didn't matter. Chasing money that ended at the end of the day. When you're dead, you're still dead. With, you know, you're still dead, right? No matter how much money you think you have, right? Chasing what I thought was what was a matter to me. But God has a different plan for us because God sees something better. And I'm telling you, God sees something in you. There are seasons, okay? There are seasons, right? When you have kids, you have to focus your energy on that season. It, it, there is. And that's your important season. But you also have to focus on you, Heather. You also got to, you can't, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give out of, you can't give out of your impetus. You got to give out of your abundance. So the question for us becomes, are we going to be good soil where people's lives can be changed? Or are we going to simply allow the seeds that God gives us to be eaten up by something else? I don't know how much time I have left. I don't know how much time you have left. I really don't. Maybe it's 20 years, 30 years, hopefully 100 years. Hopefully a few more years. The question becomes, it's time for you to take the clumps out of your life and allow God's hands to put it in there. Is it easy? Man, I'm telling you, working in the soil is hard work. But when things grow, when things grow, when things grow, and you can say, I, not that I did that, but I got to be part of that. That's where the kingdom of God touches your life. As we respond today, I want to respond to this Wesleyan prayer, and I'm gonna, we're going to put it up, and I want you to respond to this and say it with me. Okay, because this is where, this is where we should be. We should be, okay, God, these are the cards you gave me. I need to submit to you. So will you join me in this? I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Write me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen and amen. As we all sit and meditate about the status of our soil, let's, let's stand actually. Let's join our voices, sing about blessed, blessed assurance and where we're going to put our faith, where we're going to put our trust. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His 
Spirit Washed in His blood And what He did for me on Calvary's more than enough So I trust in God My Savior The one Who will in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail, perfect submission. So this is my story And this is my song I'm praising my risen King and Savior All the day long So I trust in God My Savior And he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. Come on, church. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him.
place there are some extra seeds and say I would like you to take those seeds and this is your challenge to take those and give those to somebody okay and tell them that God wants to grow something special in you so give those to somebody and tell them that God wants to grow something in them um, I want you to know this if you haven't heard anything I've said today know this God loves you God loves you so much that he gave his son for you his son arose from the grave because God loves you and I'm betting my life on it, and I hope you're betting yours on it, that God will come again because he loves you. And all God's people say, Amen. Hey, introduce yourself to somebody before you leave here, especially if you can help with the, the chairs. If you can't, if not, leave them in. Travis and I will get them. <laughs> <laughs> a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and be a little more.